For more physics related videos, please subscribe. Welcome to the Physics Almanac and the first video in a series on the history of astronomy. In this video, we'll be covering the beginnings of what led to modern day astronomy, starting with prehistory, meaning astronomy prior to the existence of writing. Now, in absence of writing, we have no written records of what these cultures were thinking when they were looking at the sky, but we do have archaeological evidence that many cultures were in fact tracking the motion of certain celestial objects, mainly the sun and the moon. For example, we have Stonehenge right here, which, while we don't know exactly what it was used for, it does appear to be built to track the motion of the sun as well as lunar phases. Why this culture was doing this, we can't say for sure, but it's likely some combination of religious purposes and a calendar, probably for agricultural purposes. If they have a calendar, they know when to plant their seeds and when to harvest them. Now Stonehenge as it is today was actually built after civilization began and after the invention of writing, but the culture that built Stonehenge itself did not have writing yet. Even though Stonehenge is not as old as civilization, the archaeological evidence shows that Stonehenge was preceded by similar wooden structures, and maybe even straw structures before that, only to be foiled by a big bad wolf, and that some sort of structure similar to Stonehenge, just not built out of stone, has been there dating all the way back to the end of the last ice age. Over time, the wood was gradually swapped out with stone. Now, structures like Stonehenge tracking the motion of the sun or the moon exist all over the world. For example, we have this structure in Germany tracking where the sun is rising throughout the year, as well as this structure here, which appears to track the phases of the moon. This is basically as much as we can say about astronomy in prehistoric times. Eventually, civilization and writing begins, and now we have the first written records of astronomical data, starting with the ancient Near East and, most importantly, Egypt and Mesopotamia. As far as we can tell, the earliest astronomers of ancient history were the Sumerians of ancient Mesopotamia. Here we have a clay tablet showing a star chart. I'm not sure if this actually dates back to ancient Sumer or a different Mesopotamian culture. Nevertheless, the Mesopotamians and the Egyptians lay the foundations of what will lead to modern day astronomy. There are a number of astronomical and mathematical conventions that we still use today that date back all the way to these two cultures. From Bronze Age Mesopotamia, for example, we have the division of the circle into 360 degrees. Why they chose to divide a circle into 360 parts is likely some combination of the fact that there are almost 360 days in a year, and that they used a base 12 and a base 60 number system, and both 12 and 60 divide evenly into 360. The Mesopotamians divided and mapped out the sky into a number of constellations, many of which we still have today, as well as further dividing the constellations into a series of 12 or 13 special constellations called the Zodiac. The Zodiac is a band of constellations through which all the planets, the sun and the moon, appear to travel on the background of the fixed stars. The Mesopotamian Zodiac is the basis of the modern-day Western Zodiac. It has changed a little bit since Mesopotamia, but it's built off of them. The idea with the zodiac is that some celestial object, such as the sun, will be in the constellation that is behind it when it rises. So, let's say you are a Leo. That means that on the day you were born, when you looked at the rising sun, the constellation that appeared behind it was the constellation of Leo. And then you can do the same thing with all the other planets and create some sort of astrological chart telling you about the type of person you are and what's going to happen in your future, if you believe in that sort of thing. Alongside the Mesopotamians, we also have the Egyptians, who are doing their own astronomy. They have their own star charts, they have their own constellations, and they too have their own zodiac, although it's clear that there's a lot of overlap between the two. So these two cultures were obviously in contact with one another, or possibly some of the constellations they have in common date back to a previous culture from which they took it from. The Egyptians are generally credited with giving us the division of the day into 24 hours. Now, it turns out the Mesopotamians also divided the day into 24 hours, so there's a bit of a historical debate as to who did it first. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a second to like and subscribe, and maybe share it with some friends. Now, both the Mesopotamians and the Egyptians only tracked five different planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. 
because these are the only planets that are visible to the naked eye. In fact, no culture on Earth would know about any other planets until the invention of the telescope. Sometimes you may see writings saying that they tracked seven planets, and that's because they're including the Sun and the Moon as planets. Today, we don't consider those planets, but it was common at the time to refer to anything that moved relative to the fixed stars as a planet. So that would include the Sun and the Moon. Some of you may have come across some claims on YouTube or other places on the internet claiming that the Sumerians knew about all the planets revolving around the Sun based on this image here, where they state that this is obviously a representation of the Sun with all the planets orbiting around it in their correct orbits and relative sizes. Well, if you actually take a look at this more carefully, you'll realize that this doesn't match at all. For one, the relative size of the planets are not accurate, their relative orbits are not accurate, and in this image, there are in fact 11 planets going around this central star. Even if we include Pluto, we only have 9 planets. And if you then add the moon as well, that still only brings you up to 10. So what is this 11th planet? Well, the explanation to this is that the people who are looking at this image are simply looking at an image based on their own vision of the world and have not actually read what the Mesopotamians wrote. The Mesopotamians wrote that there are five planets. So what's going on with this image? Well, these are not planets. It turns out everything in this image is a star. This is representing a star cluster. Why is this central star drawn differently? Well, for one, there is no rule that says artists must draw all their stars the same way. But in this case, the most probable explanation is that this star is a special star. Given that there are a total of 12 stars here, it's useful to know that the Mesopotamians associated a star to each month. There are 12 months, there are 12 stars here, one of them is special. The special star in the center here is likely representing the current month's star. So be careful what you believe on the internet, especially by people that are looking at an ancient image and interpreting it based on their own modern and cultural viewpoints. So far in our history of astronomy, we are well into the Bronze Age. However, the ancient Near East or ancient Eastern Mediterranean is not the only place where astronomy is being practiced. Over in China, the exact same thing is going on completely independently and in parallel. On the bottom left here, we have a prehistoric observatory called the Taosi Observatory that, like Stonehenge, is tracking the position of the sun. So you can see that on various days, the sun will rise and shine through different slits in the structure. This is actually a modern recreation. The actual site, the actual archaeological site, is shown right here. The Chinese also map out the zodiac with 12 or 13 symbols, but of course they come up with their own set of constellations. On the other side of the world, in the Americas, more or less at the same time, we have the Olmec, who are the first known civilization of the Americas. They were centered in the Isthmus of Tehuantepec in southern Mexico, mainly in and around the modern state of Veracruz. We don't know that much about the Olmec. They are most famous for their colossal stone heads that people have claimed look like Africans and are evidence that Africans either visited the Olmec or are in fact the originators of the Olmec. But those making this claim have obviously never actually seen what the local population looks like. If they have, they would realize that these statues look exactly like the local Native American population. So again, be careful what you believe on the internet. Like I said, we don't know that much about the Olmec and what they knew from an astronomy point of view, but we do have evidence that they oriented some of their structures in accordance with the motion of the sun throughout the year. This in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean they were tracking the sun. They may have just oriented their buildings in order to get shade or sunlight in their house. The same way you might put your solar panels on the south side of your house, this doesn't actually mean you're tracking the motion of the sun, you just know from what direction the sun shines. But the Olmec developed what is called the Mayan calendar. It's not actually the Mayan calendar. It's called the Mayan calendar because Europeans first learned of it from the Mayans. But the Mayans actually got it from the Olmec. And this calendar is sophisticated and detailed enough to prove that the Olmec were practicing some form of astronomy. Eventually the torch will be passed on to the Mayans, who come a little bit later, so we'll discuss them in a later video. So we can see that during the Bronze Age, Many different cultures were practicing astronomy, but the ancient Near East and mainly Egypt and Mesopotamia are the foundations of what would lead to modern day astronomy. This is not because they were better astronomers or a superior culture or anything of that sort. From what we can tell, 
all of these cultures that were practicing astronomy at the time were equally advanced, equally sophisticated, and equally good astronomers. Some may have known a little more than others or a little less in other ways, but broadly speaking, they're all doing the same thing. The reason Egypt and Mesopotamia are the ancestors of modern-day astronomy is simply an accident of history. So don't go thinking that the ancient Near East is somehow more advanced than anywhere else. So now we are well into the Bronze Age, and catastrophe is about to hit, at least in the ancient Near East. And this catastrophe is called the Bronze Age Collapse, in which all of these ancient Near East cultures collapse. The only cultures that survive this collapse are the Mesopotamians and the Egyptians, and in the case of the Egyptians, they're never quite the same. They never fully come back to the great civilization they were prior to the collapse. Out of this collapse, new cultures rise up, starting with the ancient Greeks. There were actually Greeks during the Bronze Age, but these are the Mycenaean Greeks, not the Greeks we think of when we think of ancient Greece, the Greece of Aristotle and Pythagoras and Socrates, etc. The Greeks build heavily off of the Egyptians and the Mesopotamians and make a number of advancements themselves, but they are not the only cultures to come on the scene at this point, and we will discuss the next phase in the history of astronomy in the next video. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to know more about the history of astronomy, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for the least of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.